lovelies. So I wanted to kind of try to explain something. Um, and the only way I know how to explain it is through my asthma. So I have really bad asthma. Actually, horrible asthma. I've been to the hospital a few times. Um, and trust me, my parents are not the going to the hospital type. I've actually stopped breathing, um, gone to the hospital type situation, almost died. Um, and through my years, it's gotten a little bit less and less, but I still have my nebulizer and pregnizone and all that jazz. But I just don't really talk about it with people. I'm super insecure about it. I don't know why, because it's kind of like a nerdy thing, I guess always like nerdy get people in TV and movies always had it and everything so anyways but it's the best way I know how to explain something that happens with me with my anxiety so I have all these things for my asthma I have um, something I take every day so that it lessens my um, asthma and then I have my rescue inhaler which is my Ventolin and then I have my nebulizer, which is when, which is a, a treatment that I take in a cup. It's what they do in the hospital. Um, and then, so if my rescue inhaler doesn't work, then I do treatments. And if my treatment's not working, then I take uh, my pregnizone, which is very rare. It's maybe a couple times a year that I take that. So... My rescue inhaler is gold to me. Um, if that starts failing is when I start panicking. So, um, but there was a point where I was taking my rescue inhaler every day, multiple times a day, which is, well, I, scientists argue or medical professionals argue that that's in the fatality rate is usually when people die of uh, from asthma is that they are taking their inhaler every day but who do they know right no I really was taking it way too much and it was starting to not have the same effect on me um usually when I took my inhaler it's like you take one puff you try to get it into your lungs and then the second puff is just this oh breath of air that just I can't even explain it <laughs> like brings me to tears but when you're really in a scary situation when you can't breathe it really is just an amazing thing and I wasn't having that effect anymore so um, I have the same kind of idea with my um, anxiety medication I take out of am but it's so highly regulated for good reason, but um, but doctors are so careful about it, and it's I mean it's dependent on which do which doctor. The doctor that I first got put on it by was not careful about it at all. He had me taking it pretty much full dosage for like a huge man. <laughs> Um, and I decided on my own that I didn't want to be taking so much because of my asthma situation. I didn't want the effects to stop wearing, to start wearing off because I was taking it to help me sleep. So there's this thing that happens now and it, it's actually a huge, I think, a huge part of why I ended up in the hospital for um, my anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts is because I wasn't taking it enough and um, it's weird I know that I need to take my medicine I have these thoughts like I peeled off all my nail polish the only time I do that is when I'm having anxiety um, Bella has an appointment tomorrow so I know that I'm having anxiety about that I walked down to the beach um, 6 30 this morning not able to sleep all night um, because September is a really rough month on me, um, which I'm praying about and hoping to get the strength to talk about it with you, um, 
what happened um, many years ago in September, but still affects me to this day. Um, and I still don't take it. And it's a really, really scary place to be, just as if I were to not take my rescue inhaler. If I don't take my rescue inhaler, I can't get anything into my lungs. I just can't. You have to be able to breathe to be able to get any kind of medicine into your lungs. So I would have to get to the point where I'd be taking a prednisone, but that takes time to get into your system. So I just, I need to get, I think people have a hard time understanding the mentality of like, well, you have medicine for that. Why don't you just take it? And it's like, you have this finite amount of medicine that you can take. My doctor won't prescribe anymore. And even if he did, there's a toxic dose of these medications. And unfortunately with Ativan, it's a very low dose. And I take my medications properly as di as prescribed by my doctors. So um, I, I only have a few choices. So I get scared with it. And um, it just makes for a hard quality of life. Um, I'm not saying I have a hard life. I have a beautiful, wonderful, blessed life. And everything you could possibly be blessed with, I'm blessed with. But... With mental illness and chronic pain, it, it almost doesn't matter what's surrounding you. It's what's inside of you. And um, that's something I could talk for 1,500 years about. But for those of you that suffer, I know that you'll understand what that means. Um, I just need to be less fearful and take on what I need to and do what I need to for my body and that's really hard for me because I'm very much I'm very much the type of person that walks into a doctor's office t does what they tell me to do and walks home and cries my eyes out because I don't feel that they listen to me in some cases they just I know they didn't listen to me because they'll ask me questions that I just answered or just talked about and just kind of take it at face value and give them my money and I act as if they're paying me it's, and it's my job to go in there and um and that's when when I first um, what, uh, just one of the greatest men I've ever met in my entire life was a psychiatrist a psychologist that I saw for years and years and years he just uh, no one has helped me as much as that man helped me and um, I remember sitting in his office and he said well what do you want Emily what do you want from this what do you want from me what do you want me to say to her and I just looked at him like I'm not gonna tell you you what to do you're a doctor and he's like Emily you do realize you are paying me for a service you're paying me you need to get your money's worth out of it and he's like that's what you need to think about when you go into your doctor's appointments and your psychiatrist appointment and your psychologist appointment and I just looked at him like what the hell are you talking about and it just really like scrambled my brains and was just like Wow, I have never, ever thought about it that way. And it absolutely changed through lots of trial and error and thinking about it. But mainly how I talk to other people. Because if I talk to other people that are not happy with their doctors, I say go to a different doctor. Just do it. Go to a different doctor. If you don't like them, find one that you do. You are paying them they're not ruling over your life you're ruling over theirs because you're providing the money and um no way am i encouraging like hopping from doctor to doctor but um and sometimes doctor relationships take a little bit of time but really it's your care you're paying for it 
find someone you connect with. And there are bad doctors. There just are. Just because they have a medical degree or a doctorate or whatever it is, does not mean they are qualified. I know that firsthand. Um, and you just kind of have to build up a team around you that supports you and cares for you and um, not just gives you everything you want, but gives you everything you need and um, is educated about what your needs are. So that's just my rant for today. I need to move around and I don't want to move the camera all around. So I hope you guys are my pain free, stress free day. I'm sending out X double O's. And please pray for my little puppy. She has a, I call it a doctor's appointment. I think I did that earlier. A veterinarian appointment. Can you meowy? She's sleeping. But she's right here. Come here. Oh my goodness. Say I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Yep. There she is. She's definitely was just sleeping. Um, she has a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I'm super stressed about it. She, however, is not. Oh, the life of a dog. But no, I really just want to pray that everything's fine with her and that she doesn't need a dental and that it doesn't hurt and that she doesn't need to get lots of shots and all that good stuff. So just keep her in your prayers because she's the best thing ever. Alright, so... Um, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye! Say bye, Dad! Oh!